Welcome to another Production Plus. I'm Sue Ann Taylor, and today we're talking about Kill the Messenger, a movie that was made right here in the ATL, and it is in theaters right this moment, so definitely go out and see it. Clay, yes. please just um, bring us up to speed. It's a little confusing because it took place, in, the movie takes place in 95, but the events took place well before. What was that 80s. really all about? Well, what was actually occurring, as many people will recall, they've heard about the, um, what was referred to as the Iran-Contra scandal during the Reagan years. And so how did Iran, Contra, and Nicaragua all come together? It's complicated. I know. It's very complicated, but it's, but it's certainly entertaining. Okay, well, what was occurring is that there was, okay, the communist Sandinista government we didn't like over in Nicaragua. The Contra rebels we supported, okay? And so the CIA was known to sabotage some of the Sandinistas. Well, when the American government found out about that, they said, no, we're not going to have any involvement with that. We don't want anything to do with this war. And so they enacted what was known as the Boland Amendment, which prohibited any U.S. funds to go to the rebel groups. Mm -hmm. In Nicaragua. In Nicaragua. Okay. So there was a couple of things. Ollie North is kind of loosely mentioned in Kill the Messenger by Andy Garcia's character. There was two things that, was occur that were occurring. One, hmm, if you remember about the hostages in Lebanon during all that mm -hmm. time. Yes. And you probably remember a little bit about the arms for hostages. It was kind of secret. Well, Ollie decided, mm -hmm. okay, well, how are we going to get this around this? This is in the early, early Reagan administration. Right, yes. Right? Because yeah. the hostages were taken during yeah. the um, uh, Carter administration. Right, exactly. right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So this is how we're going to circumvent the Boland Act. Mm -hmm. We're going to do two ways. One is we're going to give Israel weapons. Israel is going to sell these weapons to Iran for an inflated price. They're going to take those monies and slide them under the table and go ahead and support the Contras. So we were giving money to Iran or giving weapons like Hawk missiles, tow missiles, and you know, whatever else they needed. This is a fact, it's kind of surprising. And then on the other to hand- To Iran. To Iran. Who was fighting with? Iraq. Iraq. And we were also given Iraq chemicals, but that's complicated. Oh. Yeah, well, everybody knows of mm -hmm. this. You right. know, if you do a little bit of investigative sure. reporting, you're like, Really? Okay, well that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it goes to the Kurds and everything as well. But with that also said, the Contra groups were known to smuggle cocaine. A lot of money in drugs. As a matter of fact, narcotics ranks number three in cash next to oil and arms. Mm -hmm. A lot of money. So what they were doing is they were bringing cocaine into the streets of America. The government, in turn, was kind of turning a blind eye to the large drug pushers. And the proceeds that were made would then funnel under the ground, circumventing the Boland Act and supporting the Contras, the rebel groups. This was all great until somebody found out about it. And that would be Gary Webb. And because of it, like he says, and it's, and it's stated in the movie, sometimes some stories are tr too true to tell. <laughs> I would think that this perhaps was one of them. And um, that's basically what we're dealing with. Well, it's a compelling story, and it was a compelling movie. Now, you happen to have a pivotal role. Well, I appreciate that. And, um, and I just, I was, I took, you know, I've known you for a number of years, and I, there he is, my goodness. And, mm -hmm. um, and as a matter of fact, it's such a pivotal part in the story mm -hmm. that your clip is the one that they use to promote the movie whenever um, the actors are out there promoting it on The Daily Show. I've seen you on The Daily Show, The Today Show, you know, Regis and not Regis anymore, but Kelly and Michael and oh, yeah. um, you know, it's very yeah, it's kind of a it's and like, it's wow, because it. you've got that that you know that kind of um, that exchange where he truly decides this is this is the point and the line right the sand. that he is basically going to tell the story. Now, with that said, you know I represent the government of sorts, mm -hmm. you know an agent. Um, and my partner in that, um, 
and that exchange is Gil Bellows, and many people remember Gil, most notably from Shawshank, mm -hmm. upon he played Tommy. And another person in there... And Tommy was the one that was shot. Right. Right. Yes, yeah. exactly. Another in pivotal, right. another yeah, yeah, pivotal yeah, entirely moment. Correct. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, there's also um, uh, uh, Steve Coulter's also in that scene. Um, but I don't know what clip with, you're with showing. Ge with Jeremy as Right, well. with Jeremy. Uh, Matt, let's take a second. Let's look at that, that clip right this moment. Uh, okay. We know you were in Nicaragua. We know you saw Manassas. Am I being followed? The triangle web. Some governmental informants are scumbags. Look, I was under the impression that you guys had something to say to me. But to answer your question, no. My angle is that the American government knew drugs were put on the streets to fund an illegal war. What you want to say happened never happened. Then why am I here? American kids were going to die in that war. American kids did die, and they're still dying. Just not the ones you care about, apparently. Now, you play what kind of agent? Uh, well, I just represent the government. Could be DEA, could be CIA. Or I see. Could we just call them in? I'm Agent Jones, and um, we know about what he's doing. We've been watching him. As a matter of fact, my character had already dealt with Gary Webb in two previous court cases, mm -hmm. and so I, I knew what he was doing. He kinda... and you portrayed those in the um, in the movie as well. Right, you're, right, you're in right. those scenes as well. Right, in the court and scenes. Uh, you know he's. He's making um, what I represent rather complicated. So we call him in and um, try to... Reason with that, him. Yeah, reason. And uh, apparently it didn't go all that well. So. Because that's the pivotal moment right. in his career where he decides, I am going to write this story. Right, right. Yes. And he did. And he did. And they had the audacity to put a crack pipe on the CIA logo. That was huge. The, the, the they there would be the San Jose exactly. uh, paper. Uh, Mercury, was it? San Jose Mercury News, yeah. yeah. And that was pretty much it when it came out. You have the emblem of the CIA right. laying above it, a crack pipe. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a picture's worth a yeah. thousand words, right isn't there. it? Yeah. <laughs> and that was their idea. <laughs> that was much a surprise to Gary. He didn't see that one coming. Uh -huh. He was like, oh, that's lovely. Right, exactly. And it was, yeah. La layer and it's that what on. we remember, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. So tell me about the experience of making the movie. It was brilliant. It was absolutely very, very enjoyable. Um, you made it in film, you were telling me. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, Which that's it pretty doesn't rare. happen. It doesn't. Especially, and this was an extremely low budget movie, from what Re I understand. Relatively speaking, I mean, given. Well, that, given the cast, you well, would expect like it I to said, be. Like I said, I suspect somebody pulled in a lot of favor. Uh -huh. and, um, because you have a, an all-star cast. I mean, all you have Barry cast. Pepper, which is brilliant, most mm -hmm. notably known for, well, he received, you know, as, as um, uh, Bobby Kennedy, mm -hmm. and also to Sniper and right. Saving Private Ryan, to, you know, Jeremy, Andy Garcia, Oliver Platt. It goes on and on and on and on. Um, but the work with Michael Cuesta, which is known for Six Feet Under, mm -hmm. the Dexter, director. Mm -hmm. Long Island Expressway, brilliant. And perhaps most recently no and most notably, Homeland. Yes. Which is a great show. And so he's moved into this, and um, it's, it's a powerful movie. It's I a powerful think, movie, I, I and he's I. He steered uh, it very well. Yeah, I, I definitely yeah. think that this movie will make the. Um, the awards cuts this fall. I really, I think Jeremy is such a wonderful gentleman and such a pleasure. I mean, it was really a pleasure to work with him. Um, I pray that he gets a nod. I think he's so deserving of a nod. I was disappointed that he was not acknowledged for his work in American Hustle. Mm. He was wonderful in that. And interestingly, this movie is a around the same, well, I guess American Hustle is a tad really earlier. Early 70s, yeah. this yeah. is, this is yeah. mid 80s. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess I keep confusing when the movie the takes place. The dress changed, the 80s got a little brighter, didn't sure. it? Sure, yeah. but, but uh, it's easy to confuse when the movie takes place mm -hmm. and when the events that they were reporting on took place. So you've got that whole right. decade right. shift of um, kind of in your mind there. Right. But Jeremy 
continues to surprise me. I mean, he's Jason Bourne. He's, you know, he really takes it's, on it's these characters. It's good to be Jeremy Renner, yeah. i got to tell you. But it's so deserving. He's a great guy. But it's good to be Clay playing opposite him. Well, I mean, it's, yes, it it, is. it's, it's a great honor. You know, I couldn't be... Um, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. It really was. And all of them are such such gentlemen. They're really great professional people. I really enjoyed it. But when you're on set, it's very structured, very business. Uh -huh. um, but to see everybody the other night, it's uh, so kind tell of felt me about like that. one of the family. What, what did that, what is, what happened the other night? Oh, at the premiere. At the premiere? Well, it was wonderful. We went up to, uh, went up to New York for mm -hmm. the red carpet premiere and um, you know, you just got, it's just a wonderful time. You know, it's just, you got to see the movie and we got to watch the screening. Um, did your lovely wife get to go? Yeah, she did. Yeah, oh, she had a wonderful she time. Had a wonderful oh, time. she had a great time. She had a great time. She's such a, I don't even deserve her. Oh, I mean, she's wonderful. Yeah. Tell, tell us a little bit about your wife. About my wife? Yes. Is that what you want to talk about my wife? I do, oh, she's just gonna because love I this. adore her. <laughs> uh, well, you know, my wife is just a. Uh, a superstar. She's a superstar. Yeah. She's a. Um, she's a. She's a, a horse veterinarian. veterinarian. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. Was gonna, so yeah. I mean, I've raised horses pretty much my whole life. So, you know, we have a good western coming around. I'm. I'm good to go. You are ready. Actually, any kind of horse thing. Yeah, you guys it's are. Easy. You, it's easy. you have the entire package. You've got yeah. horses. You've got the on on set vet. You've got. You know. Yeah. You are. You it's are ready to nice. go. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and her um, practice, they typically. They already on call vet, um, typically for some of the larger productions that have horses. You know, I know they handled the uh, Hunger Games and some of the other ones. Oh, that's yeah. just wonderful. They have horses. Keep it in know? the family. Keep it in the family. Yeah. So um, the the premiere was exciting, and it's um, it's lifting off this week. Right as, now, as a national the, rollout. It, right? it came out October 10. Mm -hmm. As a platform. the premiere, right? Yeah. And it was it was brought out on 374 theaters. I believe it's about 374. Mm -hmm. Now this Friday it's going nationwide. Right now it's only in select markets, but it's doing brilliant. It's a message that needs to be told, and um, you know I think it's really gonna it's gonna it's gonna raise some brow. Absolutely. It's well, kinda... the other brows I think is going to raise is um, I think people are going to be looking at. Clay again because you got <laughs> a lot of face time out of the publicity run out of this. Well, uh, you know, I mean, your face has draw, just I been suppose. everywhere. But you know, that's how people break out in this business. Well, baby steps. Let's hope so. Mm -hmm. The yeah. baby steps to Knock to a wood. little bit bigger leap. Yeah. And I I have another actor friend in town, and mm -hmm. um, he had a role in. Um, Kind of his breakout role was in that comedy they just did. Um, I guess it was the Dumb and Dumber, um, and he had oh, a, yeah. you know a, a oh, bigger, yeah. bigger role. And That's stuff. out now, isn't it? Or mm -hmm. Is it yeah. doing well? You well, we don't need uh, to know, talk about Dumb and Dumber, but yes. They, they, they as far as, when you make Dumb and Dumber three or four or whatever it is, you know, they kind of come and go pretty quickly. Right. That's what I like about Kill the Messenger. Yeah. Kill the Messenger will be around for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, as, as a movie in the theaters, and then it will, you know, the next part of the waterfall will be, you know, the Netflix and, and that whole yeah, round. Yeah, I mean, it but still stands. But it will stands. play on TV forever. I, I think so, because yeah. the story of Gary Webb and what he exposed still stands as one of the most explosive exposés in American journalism. It's a story that needed to be told. Do you think that story, that level of journalism is being conducted today? Or, it, or has the internet taken that over? That's a very difficult question to answer. And your question, if I'm understanding you correctly, is are journalists really digging as deep as, or are they kind of a little scared? Are they corporatized? You know? I would say that, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's strictly my opinion. But much of journalism today is very much agenda-based and agenda-driven. Mm -hmm. There are some other outfits that, if I, I think Vice News, I'm not giving them a plug or anything, but I think they're brilliant. Mm -hmm. I really think they're good in so much that they put journalists in the trenches and report what you see. Um, and they're typically on the internet. They're not, you know, your big, 
news stations that in reality, I mean, let's face it, there's an agenda that is driven on each and every story. I want to convey this story so I am able to gather such a response, such an emotion from the people. Mm -hmm. I mean, like in the war that's going on today. Sure. Yeah, and I, I remember the war reporting and how important it was in Vietnam. Right. And, um, and television has come a huge way since Vietnam. I mean, well, all of media has. Yeah, of course. And, um, and there's a side of me that goes, we're just desensitized from it. I mean, there are, there's real war stuff happening. And, and there's a lot more war stuff happening than Ebola. And yet, Ebola is our big story. We can't. E Ebola is our big story we now, can't and it, now it's bashing know. the CDC because they, you know, they deceived us and told sure. us that it's not airborne, and maybe it is airborne. I don't know. We don't know. It's bad. Yeah. And we have ISIS, Ebola, and. Yeah, I was watching know. Ben Affleck, who was um, promoting the Kardashian uh, wedding. Uh, <laughs> he was doing the Gone, uh, Gone Girl. Promos, right? And he, he was talking about how Ebola was just taking over the news, and it's like it's not a genuine threat to us. You know, I'm not saying they can't get out and it can't be this, that, and the other thing, but we've got we do have things in place that will, you know. Well, let's hope. Cut it I mean, down. You know, either um, way, it's bad news. But but the the I do wonder, you know, they were making the point not so much in the movie, but in other publicity that the reason that Gary's story didn't get as much publicity as it might have mm. is Monica Lewinsky exactly. came on. And exactly. then we just couldn't get enough of that. Right, you right. Know? That's really dirty laundry that people want to read. Exactly. A presidential so, scandal. So. And I think the juxtaposition of the importance of those two stories, mm -hmm. you know, Monica Lewinsky being salacious but not terribly important, and this being historic. Right. Is um, was the real point of kill the you're messenger? You're implying the government's governmental influence on modern media. That's what you're doing. Well, is that uh, what you're suggesting? Well, I don't know if it's the government any more than it is. Um, you know, at the at the end of the day, big stories are run through legal and insurance. Mm -hmm. Who's going to sue us? What's going to be the <laughs> yeah. blowback? You know, does this matter to our audience? You know, marketing, there's all kinds of considerations that are there that weren't there in, say, the Walter Cronkite years. Sure, sure. So, uh, and I think this movie kind of shines a light on how we have moved to a different journalism. So, we, yeah. you know, I don't know if it was the government's influence or um, the, the newspapers being jealous from one another, being embarrassed that this little paper oh, got think, this yeah. big story. Um, but it, it makes it for a very compelling story mm -hmm. in Kill the Messenger. Absolutely. So what's next for you? Because this was a wonderful role for you. What's your next role? Uh, well, presently I'm just doing a couple independents, but large projects, uh, we're starting, there's a lot of audition requests coming in, but I'm a little worried we're starting to get into the holiday season. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest, things start to slow down. But um, well, was it the holiday have... season that you did, uh, what's the one that you were in where you were running up the escalator? Oh, geez, I don't Years remember. Ago. Yeah, you're well, talking well, about the change up with the Ryan Reynolds up. That's and Jason it. Bateman. That's it. Now that's kind of funny. Um, I don't remember when we filmed. That. I, could, I, I think it was it the holiday. Been. It could have been. I, I watched it a few uh, a few weeks ago, and there's lots of holidays. Well, it could things have been the there. summer, despite the fact the there summer. could have been Christmas right. trees in the mall because it's a film. Mm -hmm. You know, you yeah. don't know. You don't know. <laughs> you it don't is what know. it is. Um, <laughs> but, so, uh, but yeah, that was a fun film too. That was a fun film. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, and the director of that film directed the now out The Judge. Mm -hmm. So David Dobkin. You've all very nice. Guy. You've all taken an amp up. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you. Yeah, he's a. I'll tell you what. Um, I didn't get to spend a lot of time with that director. It was, um, you know, there's a lot going on in each and every scene, but uh, really nice guy. Really nice guy. He's really, he seemed like an actor's director, so mm -hmm. to speak. Because I remember he was like asking a lot of questions. What do you think? What do you feel? And um, that's kind of a nice thing. And Michael did that as well. All of them, golly. I, just, um, 
I very love, fortunate to work with all I of them. I love the cinematography in this. T tell me about the making of this movie. The the cinematography. Love it. Oh wow! Was Such a talented, talented um, <laughs> DP. He was responsible for um, Twelve Years a Slave. He okay. did that, and a lot of others. Um, but I think what you really want, or you're trying to focus on, is the fact that it was shot with film, mm -hmm. which is really unheard of. It's rare and, yeah. and expensive. It's terribly expensive. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I have gathered that many of the, uh, like Kodak, once they drop below a certain line, mm -hmm. they're going to completely stop producing film. Right. And so what's going to happen to the film industry? Mm -hmm. Are we going to call it the, the digital industry? I don't know. Well, but. I do know that that will be Kodak, but uh, Fuji is there to pick up the slack. They, right. They're not getting out of the film industry uh, anytime soon. Yeah. But, uh, but it will be a sad day for filmmaking, right, I think. Right, right. Uh, although, that being said, the red cameras and you know all the digital things mm -hmm. make entry into the indie world possible. Yeah, and they're and evolving to such a degree that they look great. They do. They really do. And you can copy that look. You're, mm -hmm. you're, getting, you're getting closer and closer to it each and every year. And um, I mean, at first they kind of look like bad soap operas, but now they're actually looking really good. And so. as they take on more and more special effects with the filters and stuff like sure, that, I think sure. they're getting more and more authentic mm -hmm. looking. Um, I'm, I'm actually very excited about that because it means that more movies will be able to be made. And that's really good for Georgia. It's really good for independent filmmakers as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. You know, so, so tell me about what you see happening in the Georgia film world. The Georgia film world, well, let me just tell you, 2014, the film and television industry produced an economic impact of $5.1 billion. Right here in Georgia. Right here in Georgia. That's a lot of impact. That is huge. And growing. Thanks to Governor Deal and you know whoever's mm -hmm. pushing it, and they're doing a great job. Now, um, it's going to continue to grow. I mean, it's, it, Georgia, it's not just a tax incentive, which is nice, but we're developing our, our cast. We're developing our crews. Yes. We're continuing to get better and better and better, and we're having to do it in a very short period of time. I think if you ask anybody, you know, just three years ago, if they could have anticipated what's actually occurring right now, none of them could have ever dreamed sure. that it would be where it is right now. So because you made Nicaragua look convincing, and you, well, that was yeah, shot yeah. here in Georgia, yeah, right? Yeah. Were, were you part of any of those scenes in any way? Those no, the Andy no, 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 those, no. Uh, those but you were part of the courtroom scenes that were supposed to be the LA court scenes, in uh, yeah. Sa Sacramento, I think. And, One of them. And, um, yeah. but they were all done where? All here. Where? All here. Oh, the, right downtown, courthouse. At the court? Yeah, the capital. At the courthouse in the capital. Yeah, in the capital. And it looked as good as any courthouse anywhere. Of course. <laughs> it's a courthouse. <laughs> Change flags, you're good to go. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I think um, it's kind of funny. The last courtroom scene, is it the last one? Yeah, I think it's the last courtroom scene in the film. We were, I think we were shooting at like three in the morning, four in the morning, we're there shooting. Was, we were tired. Yeah, was the, um, obviously courts in session all the time. The legislature is only in session for a few weeks of right, the year. Right. So um, were you in their off season or did you just have to be in their off hours? Off hours. Just off hours. Which was late, late, very, late. Very, very late. late. Well, yeah, nobody's there, it's good, get the filming done. Um, some of it obviously was shot during the day. Mm -hmm. The first part was shot during the day because you saw um, exteriors. Mm -hmm. Courthouse so, steps. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of that was shot during the day. But the main court scene where everything starts to fall upon itself, that's about three or four in the morning sure. when that was being made. And, uh, Did you get to work with Paz Vega at all? Uh, she was in the scenes, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. She was in um, stunningly beautiful lady. Oh, she's great. Yeah, what a sweetheart. Yeah, <laughs> she's very sweet. I can't, I can't say enough nice things about her. I mean, seriously, she's wonderful. All of them are wonderful. You know, they're all real people. Mm -hmm. Wake up in the morning, you know, just like you and I. And 
Yep. Take a shower and you know get in <laughs> get our car. Right, go to work. There you have it. <laughs> go to work. Um, well, and that's that's what it's you know. There's nothing like having your work last forever, and that's what a really good story is all about. And mm -hmm. I think that the Gary Webb story is one that absolutely needed telling. Yes. I think it vindicates his um, his life's work. Right. Right. Um, and. Um, I uh, am disappointed in how he didn't have an opportunity to really get the benefit of everything that he achieved uh, with his shortened life, but, sure. uh, but his family does and his children get the vindication of, um, I'm sure, some tough times that they went through with their father going through yeah, this yeah. very difficult time mm -hmm. being um, sort of dismissed by his own industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and I'm happy to report that one of his sons is actually pursuing a career in journalism with the San Jose Mercury News. So that's pretty exciting. And, um, you know, just a, a movie like this and the story and the struggles of Gary Webb, it's uh, really going to resonate throughout the populace, without a doubt. Without a doubt. And certainly much of the, in my opinion, much of the African-American community as well. I have one final question for you, Clay. Yes. What is your favorite part in the part that you're in? It doesn't count. What's your favorite part of the movie? What's your favorite scene? Wow. You know, there's a part in the movie in which Jeremy, as Gary Webb, talks about you can take anything in any person's life. You can dissect it, make it into a circus and just completely destroy him on something so small. And I don't know exactly what it is that he says, but I remember I think that's uh, what he has to say, and you'll know it when you see the movie. I think it resonates so deeply with everybody. You can just destroy anybody for any reason, and um, that kind of resonates. The other part is um, American kids are still dying, just not the ones you care about. Apparently, you know, mm -hmm. that, that line, that's pretty powerful as well. But um, there's so many brilliant moments in that movie. It's really great because it's straight from the heart. It's mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. and, I um, love a true story. I really and truly, mm -hmm. I, I, I love a true story. I, gravitate, I gravitated to um, uh, American Hustle because it was based on a true story as well. Yeah, it's a great, it's a really great, great movie. And it takes, uh, it takes great actors to portray real people mm -hmm. in a way that rings true to the people who knew them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think you guys have accomplished that in this, in this picture. I hope so. I, think I wish you fun. a lot of luck with it, and I thank you for being here with us. Thanks for having me. Okay. And we thank you for joining us right here on Production Plus. I'm Sue Ann Taylor here with Clay talking about Kill the Messenger. Be sure to see it.